Hey everyone, Scooby Doo here. Welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at my uh, one to one scale stormtrooper that was built using Shepperton armor. We're going to talk a little bit about the mannequin and then we're going to be doing some modifications, ultimately uh, trying to turn him into a Jedi patrol commander. Uh, that way he'll kind of go with that Rogue One poster. Uh, before though we get started with that, I um, had a few questions. People ask me why I got rid of the uh, cabinets in the other room. And basically it was um, addition by subtraction uh, by removing those cabinets and unfortunately losing the Imperial uh, Guard helmets. I'm going to be able to build three separate uh, life-size display dioramas and also going to be able to add that one-up Star Wars Arcade, when it comes out in November, I'm going to be able to add that to the actual Star Wars wall. So it was just a matter of what I really wanted in the room, and I got a lot more by removing the cabinet, so that's what I decided to do. So first with the Stormtrooper, we'll just take a quick look at him. Um, I want to start off with the mannequin really quickly. Now, as you notice, he does not have a base, but yet he's standing up, which is really cool. And so I just wanted to point that out. We'll just walk over and look at him really quickly. Um, he uses a calf stand, which is still right there, but I actually removed the actual base part. And he stands up just fine with just that little part right there. Makes him real easy to move. And again, he looks really great um, just kind of standing there. It kind of makes him look more real, opposed to uh, being a mannequin with some armor on him. Uh, as far as the mannequin goes, and I was going to talk about this a little bit a weeks ago before I started this build, but then I just started it and didn't film it. But this mannequin um, was an $80 mannequin, and that was including shipping, so you can really kind of tell what the value of the mannequin was because the shipping on those is kind of expensive. Probably the shipping was more than the mannequin. Um, this is one of its hands. I actually replaced the hands on that one, but I just wanted to show you. This mannequin was a hollow plastic. Most of your nicer mannequins are a resin type of base um, sculpt. So this one was just plastic. You can see here where the fingers are not even separated. Uh, the arms on this mannequin were just straight. His body had no contour really at all. And just to show you what I did on the other hand, because I'm going to keep them just in case if I need to use them in the future, is as I cut right here in between the fingers to separate them. Then I added some of these little metal pieces here and you're like, okay, so what are those metal pieces? They're from a hook hanger that I get at the 99 cent store. You get a pack of these and I just kind of cut them in half and I inserted them into the fingers. So they're really easy because of the cuts. And I went ahead and put a glove on to this one and you can see here now I can actually bend and somewhat pose his fingers. So this is the exact same hand now. It doesn't have the thumb right now because I cut that off. I have to work on how to attach the thumb, but um, that's kind of what I did with the rest of the mannequin itself. Uh, I cut them at the elbows and added some lumber ties, which is a thin metal and just screwed them into the uh, plastic arms. So that's why they kind of look bent. And they are actually poseable as well. And then I added uh, towels, uh, just regular towels that I cut up and then I wrapped them around like the torso and the biceps and the shoulders to give them more of a feel of a actual person. And then again, they just screw right into the uh, mannequin because of the cheap plastic. So kind of treat it like a Jack's Pacific Big Fig. If you've seen some of those uh, on YouTube where people kind of cut the elbows and they kind of put them in a posable position because they kind of come just standing straight up. So that's kind of what I did with the mannequin. Again, it was really cheap, so it was easy to modify and just start cutting and kind of posing and to get the look that I was going for. All right, so if you have any questions regarding mannequins or anything, feel free to ask. I'm not like a, you know, like a specialist on it or anything, but I've used a few of them. And uh, this really cheap one, although really cheap, 
uh, does give you a lot of fluctuation as far as doing posing. You just have to kind of do some cutting and stuff, but really, really simple. Actually with this, I actually use a steak knife to cut it. See the plastic, how cheap it is. All right, so now onto the armor. Uh, really briefly, this is a Shepperton armor. Uh, you get a really cool brochure with it. And what's nice as well is it gives you instructions on how to uh, install the armor. It already comes already strapped and ready to go. It also comes with a bodysuit, comes with the gloves. Uh, the only thing you really need is, well, you do need, is the, um, you need shoes. And you need the neck collar. And you also uh, need the uh, holster and blaster. But everything else it comes with. Uh, I really like the armor. It's already set to go. Uh, however, with all armor, you will have to do some modifications depending on your size. Uh, everything is Velcroed. And uh, it's really, really easy to work with. Uh, other uh, brands you can go with, uh, you can go with the Novos, Jedi Robe, uh, Rubies. All of them are going to, people are going to have their favorites and ones that are the most screen accurate, supposedly. Um, like this one here has that thumbprint uh, on the arm, on the left arm. Again, that's something that I didn't know about, but, um, you know, if you're hardcore, it's something that people look for, uh, how the armor is attached with screws. I already made mention of the helmet, which I don't really care for. That's not the actual helmet that comes with it. That's a black series, but um, I'm more into the modern type of armor. Uh, although the armor that was made in the 1970s from Star Wars was good, um, for display, I prefer to have something that's manufactured in today's time. Uh, it's a little bit neater and less flaws to it. Uh, but also, too, you can order uh, kits off of eBay, anywhere between three to four hundred dollars. Some of them are fiberglass, some are three D printed. Uh, some you have to do the painting on, or the trimming, or the sanding. Some come almost complete, where you just have to add the strapping system. And again, the Shepperton one is just, just about ready to go out of the box, minus the shoes, the neck, collar, and the holster. Um, and you do get this little uh, authentication uh, card with it in the Shepperton design. So there we go. If you have any questions regarding the armor, I'm not really an expert on it. I haven't done any cosplay with any of my outfits yet this is just for display purposes for now um but i do think uh, you do have to do some modifications i do know on the belt i believe for the 501st they prefer you to have or they want you to have a canvas belt that is a plastic belt uh right there and uh yeah so but i don't want to really go into that as far as the video goes as far as 501st and everything this is more for again for display so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, take some of the armor off of my Stormtrooper and we're actually going to start doing some weathering to them because again we're going to do a Jetta Commander which is very similar to a Stormtrooper which is my favorite Storm... Uh, a Sand Trooper, excuse me, which is my favorite type of uh, Stormtrooper and which allows me to as well is the original Stormtrooper the middle uh, abdomen area did not have that control panel. However, the Jetta uh, Commander did. He also, too, he has those little white things that are dangling down there on his uh, belt as well. I don't know the name of them. And actually, it looks like I'm missing one, so that means it fell off. So I'll have to look for that as well. But we're going to go ahead and get some of the armor down, and we're going to start doing some weathering. Okay, so I got some of the pieces off really quickly uh, from my last statement. What I meant to say is the New Hope sand troopers did not have this uh, middle piece here and actually when i was going to be doing this build a month ago i was thinking about seeing if this actually comes off because this looks like it's a glued piece um so you probably could take that off i'm not going to it's the inside of it i'm sure you actually could um but then after i put them in front of the Rogue One poster, I started thinking about the Jetta uh, Commander and looked at some screenshots on that. And basically, he's almost the same as like a Sand Trooper, 
except he's also an Imperial Trooper because it had this on it as well as the uh, little white things here. So I still could have made the Sand Trooper the way I wanted him to, but I know I would end up having some comments from some people saying, hey, the abdomen's not right or it didn't have that. And so I'll still probably get that anyways, but at least this one is more screen, this one will be more screen accurate um, for the Rogue One. So we're going to start off by actually just using my go-to, just the camera a little bit, my bowl that I'm used to using all the time. I'm going to be using the Tempera paint. It's a water-based paint, really cheap, really inexpensive, really forgiving. Um, I've had a lot of people comment regarding other jobs that I've done, and uh, I, I really Especially if you're just starting off, I know you can airbrush and you get really technical with a lot of your uh, jobs. But to start off with this is really great because, again, uh, you can clean it off with water. Uh, if you do want to make it more permanent, just do a, a clear coat uh, over your project. Just be careful when you're doing the clear coat that you do it in a really light coat the first time because even the wetness of the uh, clear coat will actually take the paint off as well. So you wanna just really lightly coat it at first uh, if you want it more permanent. But uh, this one just, it works really well because it dries almost like a powder. And I'll show you on this armor that it actually gives you layers of thickness of gunk or weathering or dirt or whatever. So we're gonna actually gonna use this black. And I think somewhere along the line, we're gonna use this color, which is kind of like a sand color. Haven't decided yet, cause I've never done a a life size job like this before so you're kind of learning with me but I think this should work out really well so and we're gonna put it straight on I'm not gonna even add any water to it just gonna put a bunch here in the bottom and uh, we're just gonna do this area here just gonna get some on the brush and I'm just gonna start putting it in places And we'll just kind of see how that goes. Again, I know this is going to dry. A lot of it's just going to come right. In fact, all of it will probably just come right off. And it's just a matter of how much I'm going to take off to do the weathering. And what's nice about this too as well is if I decide to do cosplay and I decide to go with just a regular stormtrooper, I can wipe all of this off and go that way. Or if I really like how this comes out, I could do a light coat of the... Uh, matte finish clear coat and then it'll it'll lock it in so I won't have to worry about it coming off. Alright so that seems pretty good because I know some of it's going to smear as well. Get some underneath here. Sorry this is a big item. I got a small camera so. Alright so let's just do that. And let's do one of his arm, his forearm pieces, because this has a lot of detail here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to let this actually dry. I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm going to try that first because this plastic is so smooth. I'm thinking I'll be able to take most of it off just using my fingers and I won't even have to use a towel that much. And just to show you too on the armor, see this just has a Velcro. You just put this on your forearm and then this Velcro it back up. Really simple. So back here. Now this video is also going to be done into sections because I'm not going to be able to finish this all in one day and I really don't want to finish it in one day. I want to take my time with it. But we'll do this first section here all today. I'm just going to let that and then I'm actually just going to pick up the camera and I'm going to hold it as steady as I can because uh, this is just really large. Um, come here with the belt. Again, um, I believe the 501st, they uh, go with the canvas belt, which I could see why. I don't know why they just don't make this canvas. I don't know why it's plastic, unless they were plastic. I'm not sure. 
And two, after I let this dry, um, again, I'm going to try to add some of the brown to it as well. I don't know how much of the brown, but... Sorry. This is one of the reasons why I don't always film. Because I would kind of just prefer just to do this <laughs> without holding a camera at the same time. Uh, but I did want to show you guys how I was doing it, so... Alright. So I'm just going to stop right there. Again, I'm going to let it dry and then uh, we'll come back in a little bit and see how it comes out. Get some here. Alright, so we're having a lot of fun here waiting for everything to dry. I went ahead and started working on uh, this leg piece here and I wanted to do experiment with the uh, gold or brown color I'm not sure if it's really coming out or not I might add a couple more uh, layers to it because they did have sand so there was like a yellowish um, tint that they had around the crease areas um, but you can see here where I've done some of the weathering and again, you can come in here and take off what you want with your finger. You can re-wet it, take off even more. So I think I am going to go back with the gold uh, a little bit more because I want more of a sandy kind of look as well as the black. And again, this comes off. So this is one piece I just worked on while the other was drying. Uh, but now let's go actually to the abdomen area. And I'm just going to show you really quickly... This stuff can just come off. And that's what I like about doing this weathering is I can take off what I want. I can leave what I want. Get this up in here. See how clean that can come out? Now, if I want to start darkening this area, all I have to do is uh, add some water. So actually, I'm going to just use this rag right here. And I'm actually going to get it wet just a little bit. Give me just a second. Actually, I saw some areas right here that are still a little bit wet. Like right here is a little bit wet. So you can see here, uh, I get a smear. I might just leave that for now, let it dry and come back again. Um, when doing your weathering, it has to look random. Or it doesn't look correct. That's why sometimes, uh, also too, I get people ask me like, well, why did you paint that and that if you ended up taking it off? Because I don't know exactly where I want everything to be. And when it looks right, it'll just look right. So we'll go in here. Take this off. Ah, find another dry area. Still hasn't completely dry. I see some little bit of wet spots in here, but this is going to give me that gunk and the buildup that I want around the creases. See, now I wouldn't have gotten that look, this look right here, if I wouldn't have used my fingers. So that's going to give me a little smudge that, how else do you get that other than messing around with the paint? Again, I'll take off a lot of this, smear some of it. Come back here with the rag. And take most of it off. Sorry, this thing is just so big to get on the camera and get detail at the same time. Get a different piece that's smaller. Alright, this will probably work better. Alright. There we go. Again, I'm just using a dry finger. You knew you got a whole bunch of them to use. <laughs> See, now I might like that look. Or I might think that's too much. But that's a complete random design that I got. Here.
So just kind of play around with it. I actually want to get this a little bit wet because I want this to have a little bit of color, but not a lot. All right. See, now I got two different layers. I have this dry layer and this layer here that's really thin. Uh, I can let that dry a little bit and take some of it off. There you go. There you go. That'll dry. And so again, you can see here, randomness, maybe too much randomness to take that off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep doing this, this exact same technique. And once I get everything the way I want it to look, I'm gonna go back in with the brown and I'm gonna add that because I do wanna have some of the sand that gets in here. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and show you an update. Uh, this is on our abdomen piece. Again, I could take off any bit of this that I want, but I left a lot of it on. And now we have the layered effect and the kind of the weathering effect. And now I want to go ahead and add the uh, sand color to the armor. And again, I'll try to, I mean, this is really um, weathered in a way that it looks natural and it looks like it's built up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add the sand color. We're going to do it the exact same way. I'm not going to put it all over the place, just in certain areas. Where I think the sand would have built up. And then once this dries, uh, I'll do the same kind of technique. More. And then we'll come back and look at the finished project, I mean, uh, product for this area. And then I'm just going to continue to do the rest uh, on the rest of the armor pieces. All right, so I got the armor almost finished. I saved uh, one of the, uh, the right leg. I didn't do that one yet because I just wanted to show a comparison really quickly. And also to his helmet. I didn't want to do his helmet too much. However, it does look quite weathered in person, not so much on the uh, camera. Again, I just used the uh, two different colored paints. If anything is too much, this is too much right here, watch this. You can just take it off. And again, if you wanna like lock it in, just use a clear coat. But I like the idea of being able to go back and kind of mess around with it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual armor set here and the two legs. I even did the uh, shoe came out pretty good. Not really sure if I like it this dark. Again, I'll just take some of this off if I want. You can just scratch it off and wipe it. And so I'll still mess around with it a little bit, but I do like the kind of grunge look that he has. We'll take a look at the back really quickly. Same thing. I still have to do this. I'll, I'll weather this up a little bit along with his uh, right leg. And then we'll get him all together and get him in place in the corner and we'll finish up this video. And here we go, the completed Jetta Patrol Commander sitting here on one side of the Empire Room. Our next, uh, or one of our next jobs is going to be to do R2 because we got to weather him up as well. But let's take a final look at our Commander. Now I don't have the backpack for it and really two reasons for that. One, the backpacks are really expensive and two, 
uh, there really isn't the room in the back uh, to have them so and it'd pretty much be hidden anyways I really like how the weathering came out I can always go back in here and change it if I want I can add more or take off some of it the pauldron over here we weathered that as well including his holster This corner area is really coming together now. Um, and speaking of backpacks, one of the, the next jobs we're going to be working on is the FET, which is over there. I'm not going to have him with his jet pack either because it allows me to put him closer to the wall. Um, so I took him up, but we're going to be working on this section next. Along with the R2, we've got to weather this guy up and make him look the part as well. So if you have any questions or comments regarding this build, uh, feel free to leave them down below and let me know what you think, how you think he came out. And there we go. Fantastic. All right. I hope you guys are having a super weekend and I shall talk to you guys later.